Do you do 3D printing in your classroom and hope to get started? 3D printing isn't as complicated as you might think with young students. In fact, I do 3D printing with all of my students in my classroom, K through five. In today's episode, I will be sharing with you my top tips when it comes to 3D printing in the elementary classroom. If you don't have 3D printers yet, don't shut off this episode. In fact, your students can get all of the benefits when it comes to designing 3D prints without you even having 3D printers. I will say the hardest part when it comes to 3D printing is actually all of the teacher management, which I'm going to share with you some tips when it comes to the management of 3D prints. But when it comes to the design side, for students, all of that is virtual within their 3D print platforms. So you definitely can do all of the lessons, all of the designing, but if you don't have 3D printers, then they just won't have something printed of their final design, and that is absolutely okay. Also, what if you were gifted 3D printers? Let's say you do a 3D print lesson and then there's a company that wants to partner with you in your area and then they give you the funds or a grant or they even donate a 3D printer. And how awesome would that be if you could actually print their design? Don't let not having a 3D printer hold you back. You can definitely, again, do the lessons with your students. So when you hopefully get a 3D printer, they will be prepared with their virtual design tools. So let's get into these top tips. Totally still listen if you don't have those printers and all the things that I like to do when I do 3D printing in my STEM classes. My first tip when it comes to 3D printing in the elementary classroom is using the right tools. There are so many different 3D printing tools out there and I get it. It can be very overwhelming, especially if you have never done 3D printing before. I hadn't done 3D printing before myself. I am 100% self-taught, so I'm sharing you things that I have learned over the years and things that have absolutely worked. So this is coming from somebody who was not formally trained in 3D printing. I did not learn this in my master's. They didn't even talk about 3D printing at all, actually. Uh, But here is my recommendation when it comes to a printer. The one that I ended up purchasing was the MakerBot Sketch Classroom, and I'm not sponsored by them at the time of this recording. If you're listening, MakerBot, hit me up. But I love this printer set because for under $2,000 at the time of this recording, you get two printers, lots of rolls of filament, teacher online training, and student online training. What's also great about these printers is that they come out of the box, so you don't have to build them. I know there are a lot of awesome 3D printers out there, but teachers have to build them. I don't have time for that. I'm not interested in doing that. I could probably figure it out. I'm actually pretty decent at building things with directions, but these came 100% out of the box, plug them in, hooked them up to my school Wi-Fi, and I was ready to go. What's really awesome too is that I know a lot of the 3D printers are being made this way, but I don't have to hook up my computer with a cord to my 3D printers. So everything is cloud-based and I can load up all the prints on whatever device I'm using. Well, computer device that I'm using, not mobile, but I can load up all of my prints, get them all organized, and then send them to my printer as soon as the bed of the 3D printer is open and available. Also a side tip, I personally did not buy the cheap filament off of Amazon. So filament is the name of the plastic that you put into a 3D printer. I didn't buy the cheap stuff because I didn't want to mess up my 3D printers. I just don't know all of those different brands. And so I just stick with the name brand filament. It is a little bit more expensive, but that way if something goes wrong and for right now, nothing has gone wrong. And I've had these 3D printers since 2020 and I'm recording this in 2023. So three years strong, I've printed thousands of 3D prints with their name brand filament and I haven't had knock on wood. Hopefully you can hear it. I am knocking on my desk, but I haven't had any issues when it comes to these printers. They have been flawless. 
I love them. It's super easy, not complicated. And for a novice like me, it's everything that I needed when it comes to a 3D printer. Also, what's really great is that they are a cute little cube size and they are all enclosed so students can't put their hands inside of the 3D printer and touch it. I have a lot of curious students, which I'm sure you do too. And even if you tell them to not touch, they still want to touch. And it is hot. It is a little bit dangerous. They could get a little bit of a burn if they touch the nozzle that is extruding all of the melted plastic. So they, or there's a little door. It's not locked, but there's a door so they can't automatically jab their hands in and touch the print. So they're super quiet. I run them throughout the day. The kids always go and check on them and they tell me if it's done. I do get an email every time a print is done. I actually started turning off that feature because when I'm really on top of things, it's a lot of emails, but also it's really helpful too, because then you can just make sure you're on top of your 3d prints. So definitely love these. I know that there's a ton of other brands out there. I'm going to get your feedback when it comes to your favorite 3d printers and I'm going to share your results in the next episode. So if you want to message me, email me, um, talk to me on Instagram, let me know what 3D printers you have, and we can help each other out when it comes to resources. When it comes to the actual designing of the 3D prints on the student side, there are two software platforms that I like to use with my students. These are have been awesome in my classroom. Again, there are other platforms out there that you can definitely try, or maybe you have experience using. Again, these are things I've used with my students, no background in 3D printing, and it's been really successful. The software I'm going to talk about actually isn't tied directly to the 3D printers that I use. So if you have a different brand of 3D printers, it doesn't matter. Once students are done designing their 3D prints, you can download their design in the print file format that your 3D printer reads. So again, don't worry about the connection with the software to your 3D printer. It should probably work. For my second through fifth graders, you could definitely do this with sixth or even middle school students who might need more support or who are getting started in 3D printing. But the platform that I like to use with them is Tinkercad, T-I-N-K-E-R-C-A-D. Again, everything I'm going to talk about is linked in the show notes. So if you're doing other things, don't worry about it. So I use this platform. It's 100% free. They have some really great tutorials on there for getting started. Now I'm with the philosophy. I like to teach them skills along the way. So I actually won't spend a whole day with kids. Here's how we do certain things. I kind of have them just learn as they go. But if you need more structure when it comes to using the program, or you actually want to stretch out your 3D printing more, or maybe you have a technology teacher and a STEM teacher, maybe the first week when they're in technology, they do the tutorials with the technology teacher. And then in STEM, maybe they do all of the designing and application of the concepts. So there's an idea for you. Anyway, on their website, they have some really great tutorials for you to go through with your students. They also have a teacher side so you can set up a class and you can have a class code that they can connect with the code or they can connect with their Google accounts. I have Google accounts at my school, so it's been really awesome. So as the kids design throughout the years, they actually can see all the classes that they were in with me and all of their designs are in one place. It also is really easy on the teacher end to get into their account once they put in that code and everything, you have full access of all of their designs, which is awesome. So you could assign the link in an LMS system that you use. I just have students go directly to the website, tinkercad.com, because I want them to practice typing in a website. So that's a really good skill. So I'm embedding that technology skill with them. And so it is hard if it's their first time ever designing, but they definitely will get the hang of it. And it's like designing with digital blocks. So it's pretty cool. You can see everything at all angles. It gives you all of these basic blocks that you can stretch out and do all of this stuff. So highly recommend. It's a really, really awesome platform. This platform is web-based and they also came out with an app semi-recently. So no matter what type of device you have, you can definitely use Tinkercad. The software that I use with my kindergarten and first grade students is called Doodle 3D Transform. The app on the iPads is paid. I don't think it's very expensive. I bought it years ago. Buying the app for me was 100% worth it. Since I teach all the kids in the school, it definitely got a lot of use and I didn't have to repay for the app. It was there every year. So if you have iPads, I highly recommend. 
If you don't, you can actually use Doodle 3D Transform free on their website and you can download the files from there. The one thing with this, there isn't a teacher account, so there's not a code you connect things to. However, their designing, in my experience, only takes one day. And so I actually just download their file the day that they create it, save it on a flash drive, and everything is right there. And then if they had a hard time designing, the next day they can try it again. They're, you're going to see when they use this platform and just where they're at with their design skills, it doesn't take very long. And that is developmentally appropriate for them. So little kids can do 3D printing. It just looks different. And what's really awesome about this tool is on one side, they draw the picture. So it's 2D. And then simultaneously on the other side, it's 3D. So they can really understand the difference between those two math vocabulary words. There's a ton of math in 3D printing, by the way. Um, just even talk about the shapes, 2D, 3D, how to stretch things out, the lines and angles, so much math that is embedded. So really, really good on those math skills. So I highly recommend those platforms, Tinkercad and Doodle 3D Transform. On my YouTube channel, just search up Naomi Meredith. I actually created tutorials on how to use these, and I actually use these tutorials with my students. So I actually show a quick little video each day before we get into our designing, and it's just some quick tips and tricks. They're very short. They're like three to five. I think the longest is six minutes, but it has like all the good stuff, and that way I'm not repeating myself over and over and over again especially with second through fifth grade. <laughs> um, and then I'm also not missing anything. So you can use those videos with your kids. I'm going to link the whole playlist in the show notes for you, but just a really great way, a good hack, pre-recording yourself, even when it comes to a tutorial. It's so funny. The kids are so silent when they watch and it's me talking, but they're way quieter watching that and paying attention than if I was showing the same stuff with them in class. So helpful tip. It'll save your voice. The second tip when it comes to 3D printing in the elementary classroom is creating standards-based lessons. Now, if you want to do a quick little tutorial lesson, it's something easy, awesome, go for it. But think about this also like a makerspace lesson. You can literally plan a makerspace lesson and a 3D print lesson the same way. Just the way that they are creating is different. I've seen a lot of really cool projects out there, but they have nothing to do with anything. And so you're kind of missing out on that opportunity when you're embedding standards. And especially if you need to use grades, you could still embed them. So think about that when you're creating your lessons. When you're looking at the standards, look for those keywords like create a model, design a solution, not every standard works great for a STEM lesson, but there are ones that really help enhance it. So definitely dive into that. In my K through two STEM planning workshop and the three through five STEM planning workshop, I talk a lot about this when we create the lessons together in the replay. And I even give you a list of keywords and key standards that would work really well when it comes to STEM projects. So you can definitely still jump in on those workshops. It was all recorded when we did them live. And then there's also a private podcast where you can listen to the whole thing on the go. So definitely helpful when it comes to standards and picking out things for your lessons. Like I mentioned, I do teach 3D printing lessons with all of my students K through five. I didn't start off that way. I actually had older printers that were left in my classroom when I first arrived and I couldn't even get a lot done. So I did something different, but I definitely have figured out when it comes to the lessons and the things that I do with all of the kids. So here's the lessons that I teach K through five, just a little snap. Shot. In kindergarten, they design a keychain to help remind them of how to take care of the earth. In first grade, we talk about animal babies and their adults and their physical traits that are on their bodies and how they have similarities and differences. This one is a little bit different. I will print their design in a lighter color, a yellow or a light gray or a white, and then they use Sharpies to color all of those details and they turn out absolutely adorable. In second grade, they create a custom birdhouse to help animals in the area. And like I mentioned, this is their first time when they're experimenting with Tinkercad. So this project sounds very simple, but it does take them some time because they're learning how to use the tools. 
and they are absolutely okay with it. Third grade, they are designing a model of the life cycle of a living thing. So we do some research of a living thing, and then they're able to design that model. In fourth grade, they are designing a nightlight that will be lit up with a circuit and has an on and off switch. So the actual nightlight is 3D printed. And then once I give them their design back, we actually create a paper circuit that has a switch that their nightlight can be lit up by. And then fifth grade, it all comes full circle. So we talk all the way in kindergarten about these ideas, but it's also about taking care of the earth. But this time they are designing an invention that will help correct, prevent, and protect earth's resources. So again, these are all connected to standards. We go through the whole engineering design process. I have a whole series about the engineering design process if you need more support with that. And so it is something we work on throughout the week and they have some amazing designs at the end of it. The last tip when it comes to 3D printing in the elementary classroom is to create a system to keep track of prints. Like I said, the whole part of 3D printing that is the hardest is the teacher side of all of the 3D printing. With over 500 students in my school, and I do have all students create a design, that is a lot to keep track of, and things can get lost really quickly. I do have a whole free template set in my TPT store, Naomi Meredith, where you can actually get these templates and set up a 3D printer station to help you keep organized and also to get the students involved as to what is printing on the printers. The number one question you will get asked is, what is printing right now? So even if you have a sign as to what project is going, what grade level is going, their teacher, I even make a list of all the teachers whose classes are done and the ones that are coming up. These are all the top common questions, 100%, trust me. These are the things that I always get asked the most. So when you have a little station set up this way, those questions will be semi-answered for you. And it'll also help you as the teacher keep track of where you are at in your 3D printing management. When I have students save their 3D print files or with the younger students, I will do this part for them. I will name the print file with their first name, a dash or a slash, and then their teacher's name. Then I will download all of the print files, have them on a flash drive. I don't save them on my computer. It takes up a lot of room, but I will save it in a flash drive with a folder with their teacher's name and it's ready to print their class. I will upload them all into my cloud-based system. I will do any resizing and then send, keep on top of the prints throughout the day. I start my projects in February and March, so I am printing for months. And sometimes I will even take the printers home over spring break, which fun little story. I actually got my 3D printers a week before the COVID shutdown in 2020. And this is when, again, I didn't have a whole lot of experience when it came to 3D printing. So I learned a lot during this time and also did some things to help support um, some different project community projects in the area. So that was pretty cool. What's also going to help with your management, it does take time in the class, but it's 100% worth your time, is I physically look at every single student's project before they are able to be done. So we will go over a modification checklist that I create for them. So what are things that they may have in their design and things they have to do in their design so that we will be printed correctly. These are in all the lesson plans that I created for them. And then they have to go through the checklist, and then I will go through the checklist a second time with them. And this will ensure that when I download everything, I have way less issues and I don't have to troubleshoot as much because I know it's going to work correctly. And of course, print all of the class list of your students. And then as they are finished up, highlight the names of kids that are done, make any notes of kids who might need to redo a whole design that happens sometimes, or even kids who are absent. And then I just have a bag of Ziploc bags next to it. And I write their name on a Sharpie, put their design inside, and then save all the prints for the next time when I see their class. So of course, stay organized. It is a lot of management. I don't always start prints before I leave at the end of the day. I don't take the prints home. I just start the projects early in the year and then I can get them done. Also with this, print all of their things pretty small. I don't print them very large and that's how I am able to get through all of the designs throughout the year. So definitely figure out a system, but that's definitely worked out for me and I can stay on top of it. As a recap, here are my three biggest tips when it comes to 3D printing in the elementary classroom. First, use the right tools. Second, create standards-based lessons. And third, create a system to keep track of prints. 
Everything I talked about in this episode are linked in the show notes for you to browse through and keep track of everything. So it's definitely your hub for when it comes to 3D printing in your elementary classroom. And don't be overwhelmed. I will say 3D printing is one of my most favorite units that I teach students. I don't know why I love it so much, but it's just super cool and it's a lot of fun. So definitely check that out. You can even see all the lessons I teach teach with the kids. And I can't wait to hear how you start 3D printing with your own students.